Good morning, class. So today we're going to be doing the last full lesson. So on Friday, I'm just going to put out a little kind of wrap-up video, but today is actually going to be your last lesson for this class. Um, so we're kind of going to finish up the water cycle. I know we did it pretty quickly, um, but we kind of ran out of time. So um, Earth has about 1.26 times 10 to the 21 liters of water on it. That's a lot. So that is about um, 1,260 billion billion liters of water. So that's all the water on Earth. And this is uh, an estimation. We haven't gone through and measured accurately by like a cup at a time how many liters of water on Earth. Um, but this is kind of an estimation. Uh, but we have ways to estimate it pretty closely. And 3% of this water is fresh water. So for humans anyways, salt water is not drinkable. The salt is going to dehydrate you. So if you're thirsty and you're trying to drink salt water, you're going to get more dehydrated and it's going to be bad for you. So when we talk about fresh water, that's water that we can use to drink. And our whole infrastructure around water is designed around fresh water. So the water in our toilets, fresh water. The water in our showers, fresh water. The water in our sink, fresh water. Um, in, I think in some places, uh, they have infrastructure design so that salt water is used in the toilets. Um, I think you still want fresh water in the showers because you don't want like, if you, like, you know, when you go swimming and uh, salt water, you come out and kind of like, get some salt crystals on you sometimes. You don't want that if you're going to have a shower. Um, but in Canada, anyways, our whole infrastructure is designed around fresh water. So, if we got 3% fresh water, that leaves us with about four, uh, about 40 billion billion liters of fresh water. Still a lot of water. Now, about 1% of that fresh water that we have is easily accessible. So some of it is trapped in glaciers, some of it is just not accessible, or some of it is uh, very unclean. So uh, if you go to like some small ponds or like some small lakes, and it's just, the water is unusable for us unless we really, really, really clean it. Um, so like if you think about Elk Lake, Elk Lake has a ton of um, goose poop in it and it's just like disgusting water. So that's not water that's really accessible to us or easily accessible to us. So if we're looking at 1% of that, that's about 400 million billion liters of water now. So it's getting smaller, but still a lot of water. Um, so let's do some quick little math on this. I, this is what maybe, maybe this isn't too relevant for you, but I find this kind of math interesting when you just, you're trying to solve a problem, but you don't really need to be very accurate. So you're just trying to make some estimations and just see what happens. So, uh, there's about 7.8, uh, 8 billion people currently on earth. Well, it's 7.756 billion people on earth, but we're just going to round that up to be 8 billion people. Make some math easier. So let's figure out how much fresh water we have per person on average. Now, in Canada, we have a lot of fresh water that's easily accessible to us, and it's, it's a great resource for us. But in some places, maybe like the Sahara Desert, um, they don't have access to fresh water the same way we do. So when we're doing this calculation, we're just trying to figure out the average amount of fresh water per person. Um, it's not like everybody has the same access to fresh water. So um, this is going to give us 500, billion, million, sorry, 500 million liters of water per person on average. It seems like a ton of water. Um, so each person needs about 2.7 7 liters of water per day. Uh, and that's like the basic need. And that's mostly drinking water. Uh, and that works out to be about 1,000 liters of water per year. So if we said, okay, the water cycle is not going to replenish our water, how long do we have to live on Earth using the water we have, assuming that once we use it, it's gone? That would give us about 50,000 years of water. It's a long time, considering that humans have, if you go back 50,000 years, humans will look very different. Um, so 
Um, but in most places, water is used for such a wide range of things between uh, like making things, so uh, agriculture, or making clothes, like with jeans. Jeans use a ton of water to make because uh, all the, the way the dyes work. Um, so on average in Canada, each person uses about 350 liters of water per day. So that includes uh, showering, brushing your teeth, drinking water, um, the water used for everything you eat. So all the food you eat, how much water is used for all that. So it kind of sums up everything into one nice number. Uh, and that works out to be about 125,000 liters of water per year, which is a lot more than the thousand we had before if we look at just necessary water. So that means each person has just under 400 years left of water until the fresh water would be gone if the water cycle did not uh, replenish the water. Um, so what the water cycle does is we use water, we use this fresh water, and the fresh water gets put back once we use it back in the system by like sewage waste, and most of the time it's clean, sometimes it's not, it's just like chunked right back into the ocean. Um, or it goes back into the ground and it gets absorbed or evaporated into the atmosphere and then goes through the water cycle and comes back down to the condensation. And some of that will fall back into freshwater reserves. So the cycle gets replenished and the water we use goes back to being freshwater. Although most of it doesn't. So if we have this one, 3% of the world's fresh water, that means the water cycle has been going on for billions of years. So that's a very solid number. That number's not gonna change. So when precipitation falls, 3% of that is gonna remain fresh water. And on average, 1% of that is gonna be easily accessible. Um, so we're not gonna run out of water, but Canada, is the second worst country in the world at water usage. We use so much water and it's a great resource for us and we're able to use it because we have really good fresh water supplies. But because we have such a good supply, we have not been sustainable with our water. We're using water at an increased rate. So the more we use this fresh water, the more we're reducing our fresh water supplies. And we get to the point where the demand for fresh water is so big a water cycle can't replenish it in time. Uh, and that would, then we get into a problem where people are running out of fresh water. Uh, so the water cycle is great for um, continuing to replenish our fresh water, but if we take too much advantage of it, uh, that can cause some problems. So Canada is very lucky to have a lot of fresh water. But there's currently a water crisis, crisis going on in uh, the First Peoples communities across Canada and um, quite a bit in BC. So um, I think most of the communities around where we are have easily accessible drinking water. So you can go to your tap and you can drink water. Even the water in the showers or the toilets is drinkable. But for a ton of uh, First Peoples communities across Canada, they have very rarely had clean drinking water. So there's been year long water advisories in I think it was like 58 of the communities, First Peoples communities in BC for like it's periods extending past a year. And they get fits for a couple of days or a week, but it goes back to being a water advisory. So this water advisory means that the water coming out of the tap is not safe to drink. Um, so this doesn't necessarily have to do with the water cycle, but I thought as we're talking about fresh water, um, it'd be important thing to talk about. So I only got a small little paragraph about that in here. Um, so Canada has been putting in some things, that, some legislation to improve the water supply in first people's communities, but this has been going on for 50, 60 years. And we have the resources to fix it. We just haven't done it yet. So this is a huge problem and something to be aware of um, in BC and in Canada, that we are not doing our part to provide the first fuel communities with proper drinking water or proper water at all, especially in a place where Canada, where we have so much fresh water, it's like the minimum that we could possibly do. And we have the resources to do it for sure. Um, so if you're curious about this, I have a couple um, 
resources. If you want to reach out, uh, email me or ask uh, on the Google Classroom. I'm happy to uh, give you some resources so you can read up on it a bit more. Okay, so uh, lastly, what I want to talk about is just kind of connecting the water cycle to climate change and weather. So the warmer the climate gets, the more water gets put into the water cycle. So the polar ice caps and the glaciers, they're going to melt. So the polar ice caps and the glaciers, that's like the 2% or that's like the 99% or that's like 97% of the fresh water that is unaccessible. So that's about over 2%, 2.5% of the world's water is currently frozen. And the warmer the climate gets, all that water is going to get put back into the water cycle. So the warmer the weather, the more water we have in the water cycle, and the more water that gets evaporated, so the faster the water cycle goes. So if we think, let's say one unit of water gets evaporated off Earth each day. I don't know what that unit is, but one unit of water gets evaporated off Earth each day. And if that doubles because it's warmer, so more water gets evaporated, and there's more water to get evaporated, that means twice as much water is going to fall to Earth. So that's just going to speed up the process of the water cycle. And you may think, okay, that's great. The more water in the water cycle, the more precipitation we have, which would be more rain because it'd be warmer, so we don't really have as much snow. Um, we'd have less droughts, and that would be great. The only problem is the more water that goes in the atmosphere, it means clouds will reach their maximum density faster. So let's say right now, the cloud pulls up water, and it's going to keep growing and growing and growing until it starts to rain. But in the time it takes to, for it to rain, it's going to loop travel. So that cloud can travel way inland and get places uh, that wouldn't normally see clouds or that have few clouds, some water, some rain, as it travels inland. Now, if we double the amount of water going into the atmosphere, water vapor going into the atmosphere, that cloud is going to reach the maximum density where it's going to rain um, faster meaning it doesn't have as much time to travel inland. So what this is going to mean that areas with more rain, so like Vancouver and Victoria, are going to get a lot more rain. And then areas that are dry are going to get more dry. They're going to see more droughts because the clouds and the precipitation doesn't have time to travel to this place because it's going to rain beforehand. So the more water in the water cycle, it's just going to lead to more extreme uh, precipitation events where either you have no water for extended periods of time or you just constantly constantly get uh, precipitation um, so the more water in the water cycle has a reverse effect than what you think um, and that being said if we have like no water in the water cycle that would be bad as well so it's kind of like the best uh, for us would be the kind of right in the middle where we do get precipitation but it's not like we're getting precipitation so much that some of the places that don't get precipitation aren't able to get any at all. Um, and we're in a pretty good, we have been, I guess it's getting worse now, but we have been in that pretty nice sweet zone. And now we're changing the climate. That sweet zone is kind of going away and we're seeing more droughts and more heavy rain. Events. So um, I'm gonna end it there. So I didn't want this to be a huge lesson. Um, if we we're going to spend a couple weeks on this topic, a couple of the things that we would have covered would be uh, how water can be used as a resource. So really looking into um, water as a resource worldwide. Uh, we'd analyze the effects of large bodies of waters on the surroundings. So this would tie in nicely to climate change, looking at how like the Great Lakes of Canada affect the climate around um, the lake or even in like Ontario. Uh, how that lake would affect kind of the overall climate in the area. Um, we look into water qualities. So um, what place has the best water quality, stuff like that. Um, and then we'd also look into the conservation of water uh, and how um, worldwide this is becoming more and more, um, more of a topic. Uh, before it was like, oh, we got lots of water, we're fine. Um, but as the water usage increases, conservation of water becomes a bigger and bigger topic. Uh, one other thing that I forgot to put on here that is quite interesting. So Canada is 
I believe the only home of naturally occurring heavy water. So heavy water, so normally water, well, always water is hydrogen H2O. So a uh, hydrogen atom surrounded by two oxygen atoms. H2O, H, or is it an oxygen with two hydrogen? Oh gosh, I should know this, one second. All right, yeah, so water is an oxygen atom surrounded by two hydrogen atoms. So that's gonna give you um, a weight of 16 um, atomic pounds. So it's like one mole of this molecule is gonna weigh 16 grams. But heavy water is it has two extra neutrons, so it's gonna weigh 18 grams per mole. So it's just heavier. Same thing, but it's just heavier. It has higher density. Uh, and it's actually used in nuclear reactors. So Canada it was able to use its heavy water as a resource and loan it out. Like you we literally ship water to the states and they have to give it back to us. We loan it out for uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, so it does a really good job of cooling down uh, and harnessing the energy from the nuclear power plants uh, than, than like regular water does. It does a better job. So uh, Canada has a, a very, very cool natural resource in heavy water. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can just Google heavy water in Canada. Um, it's uh, pretty interesting stuff. So we didn't have time to cover all this. Uh, so if you're interested in any of these, uh, I'm happy to find some resources for you. So please just reach out. Uh, and uh, that's where I'm going to end it today. Have a great day.